I've got eyes on the new co-host. Back to the breakdown. I'm Rowan Rising. And I'm Jackie Rivera. From the sideline to the studio, I'm your new co host. Icebreaker question Jackie, do you follow any of your teachers on social media? Wait, teachers have social media? They certainly do. Satya Jackson Dunning has more. Matthew Schrock is a Davis High math teacher with a passion for movies. He shares his love of film with his students and on his Instagram account, Schrock Star Reviews. Years ago, I listened to a guy who also likes movies, and he said that everybody who likes movies should be part of the community, no matter what you do. And so I decided I wanted to do reviews, but I don't write super well, so I decided to use my face instead and just show how things went that way. Schrock films his reactions as soon as he gets home from the theater, sharing his fresh, honest opinion. Every once in a while, because it's reviews, people will disagree, and sometimes they do so with some words that aren't so nice. But it doesn't happen very often. Schrock isn't the only teacher with a strong social media presence. Fellow DHS teacher Chris Lee has over 6,600 followers on Instagram, including some of his students. He posts a lot of stuff about music and occasionally like just movies that he's talking about. Um, and he'll do like a daily record that he thinks is cool uh, for that day. So I would not only look at the school related stuff, but also just whatever he was talking about musically. Just like Lee, Schrock is also followed by a number of his students. I like Mr. Schrock's Instagram account because it's very him. Uh, he does his movie reviews in a format that nobody else does. Schrock doesn't follow students back until they've graduated from DHS, but he encourages everyone to join the Schrock Star Reviews community. The more follows we get, the merrier. And a like and a share shows that you care. For The Breakdown, this is Satya Jackson Dunning. It's a fun week for DHS students. Let's hear from StudGov. My name is Griffin. My name is LJ. We're back with your starting of announcements. First up, the homecoming dance is this Saturday from 7 to 10 in the North Gym. Uh, make sure you don't wear heels because you will be kicked out. Um, up next, also, door deck. If your class is participating in that, make sure your decorations are done by tomorrow. Judges are coming around soon. Oh, yeah. Next yeah. up, we've got the parade. The annual homecoming parade's coming, and it's going to be downtown at 1.30 on Friday. Make sure to be there or be square. And then after that, at 4.45 in the stadium, JV plays football. And then after that game, Varsity will be playing at 7, and it's our uh, homecoming game, which is Olympic theme. so make sure to come out in your country's colors. Also, clubs, make sure to get those applications in. The club fair is coming up soon. It's going to be on October 2nd. Make sure to be there, get your club represented, and have some fun. Second, out. Woo! Jackie, the senioritis is already kicking in. We've only been here for three weeks, Rowan. Uh, and back to school night was only last Thursday. Marion Delarue has more. Thursday, step number 12, parents and teachers came together for this year's back to school night. The event started at 5 p.m. and ended at 8. Many Davis High parents attended, like Ron Purnell and his wife, who were there for the 18th and last time. So this is our youngest son in his senior year. And we have enjoyed every single one of them, getting to meet the kids' teachers, getting to meet a few of their, or see a few of their projects and things like that. It's just been a wonderful learning experience. From five to six, informational booths were open to parents for them to learn more about the Yolo Food Bank, the Short-Term Emergency Aid Committee or Stake, and Wells Fargo. Robin Newman and Hannah King were running the steak booth. Here to just provide some information on families who may need some food and how they can receive the food packs, and also families who may be able to uh, donate some food here and there at our food pantry, um, and just how we can get that food distributed out. In the meantime, Future Farmers of America offered the traditional barbecue to everyone present. It's really fun. It's really great to get involved in the community, and I love working. All proceeds go to FFA so we can do fun things like go to the park and cash and ice skating. Yes. From 5.30 to 6, parents could attend choice sessions about multiple organizations. This included the Rotary Youth Exchange, the Best Buddies Club, Davis High Theater, as well as the Academic Center, which stayed open until 8. District Foster and Youth Liaison was there with a presentation on the Davis Students Support Services. I am the district's Foster and Homeless Youth Liaison here in Davis and every district is required to have one because of the, the, the risks associated with homelessness. It's a helpful resource that a lot of people don't know about, which is why I wanted to present at uh, tonight's Back to School Night. At 6 p.m., everyone converged towards the North Gym for an opening message from Principal Bryce Geigel. 
Some people I'd like to recognize with us in our space tonight is Trustee Joe Denuncio. Can you give him a hand, please? Geigel offered a quick overview of the school year before passing the mic to several other speakers, from the Parent Teacher Association, the Davis Schools Foundation, to Davis Parents University, and Student Government. Ms. Sada Bender, ASP President. After this assembly, parents followed their children's schedule for 10-minute sessions with each teacher. Counselor Kathleen Pereira, like the other counselors, was there to meet the parents and answer any questions they might have. I think it helps us parents to get an idea of where their kids' classes will be like and just to kind of feel like a student for a day and come in here and meet some of the teachers. So I think it can be very helpful. For the breakdown, this is Marion de la Rue. I heard girls' tennis did really well last Thursday. Yeah, let me tell you all about it. What's up DHS? Welcome back to Sideline Squad. This week I went to girls varsity tennis against Whitney. Let's see how it went. The girls varsity tennis games against Whitney got started at 4 p.m. on Thursday, September 12th, their second match of the season. They got into the rhythm of the match quickly, trying to get ahead. In varsity tennis, you start with zero, or love, and the first person to 40 wins the game. The first player to win six games wins what is called the set and the first person to win two out of the three sets wins the match. Now, matches can be either singles, one player from each team, or doubles, a team of two. Davis High had three doubles matches and six singles matches. One of the doubles matchups was Eva Wilson and Allison Young, who won their match being the first to win two out of the three sets. They won six games and lost two games in both sets. I think um, after several practices and just getting to know each other, I think our chemistry, we were able to figure out what our strengths were and how we can help each other out during the game. Another doubles pair, Sarah Wallace and Leah Ramel, also won their match, coming back from a rough start after being paired with new partners for the match due to illness. Um, I think we did pretty good. We started off like not as good in the first set, but we definitely picked it up for the second and third ones. Um, it was my first time playing doubles in a while, but I think I, after getting used to it and playing at practice yesterday together, I think it went a lot better. Some sets were won, some were lost. Some went into a tie-breaking round, but the Blue Devil Girls won the overall match against Whitney. The Blue Devil Girls did a great job today, winning against Whitney, with the final score being 6-3. to three. For the breakdown, this is Jackie Rivera. Have fun with the rest of Poco Week. We'll see you Wednesday on, on the breakdown. breakdown.